I'm Katherine Mangue Ward with Reason TV, and I'm here today talking with John Taylor of Stanford University, creator of The Taylor Rule, and the author of a new book, First Principles, Five Keys to Restoring America's Prosperity. Thanks for joining us, John. Great to be here. Thank you. Let's start from the top. What's so the number one? Basic idea of economic freedom is that people are free to choose what they're going to buy, what they're going to sell, where they're going to work, who they're going to hire, and how they help other people. But the American system, as it's built up, has had that within the context of a predictability of policy, a rule of law, reliance on markets, which provides uh, important incentives, and then finally a limited scope for government. So those, those are the five things which are key, actually, to economic progress. Uh, when you say a predictable policy framework, can you talk about where we're failing at that right now in this country? Sure. We're actually, it's failing across the board. It's a funny thing. When you move on and off of these principles, if you like, it's not just with respect to one policy or another. But now take uh, fiscal policy. We basically have a debt that's exploding. It's completely unpredictable. We're talking about, you know, the whole tax code is up for grabs. Very, very unpredictable. Monetary policy, we don't know whether there's going to be another quantitative easing. You don't know what the Fed's going to do. So across the board, there's this uncertainty and unpredictability, and I think that's a problem for the economy. Rule of law is your next principle, and that actually, that's a pretty big idea. A tremendous idea, and it's been a characteristic of the United States all the time, how rule of law has been important. And so when you drift away from it, it's, it's really a key. And so right now, I think there's lots of areas. You know, we, for example, we have this recent financial crisis where we had a bankruptcy code in place and instead we had the bailouts. We basically went around the rule of law and one of the automobile company bailouts, we actually put some creditors in front of others, contrary to what was in the law. And it encourages what I call crony capitalism and that's a danger. The next point is strong incentives, and I think that probably also ties into the crony capitalism point. Yeah, the incentives are important, um, and you can see where we're violating those. I could take the new health care law, as you suggest. Uh, some payments are going to be given to people who earn as much as $90,000. But if they earn a few more dollars, they lose all their subsidies. So it's an incredible disincentive to work. Your next point is reliance on markets. Defenders of a lot of the current new regulations, again, the health care law comes to mind, say, listen, these are market-based. What's your response to this idea that somehow Obamacare or, or other um, things that might look like regulations on the surface are employing market mechanisms underneath? Well, it doesn't. You know, for example, the policies to deal with Medicare has a government bureaucracy that's going to say how much should be spent on this item or that item. In contrast, say something like it's been proposed by Paul Ryan, he's going to give a certain amount of money to people and then they could decide what's the best, the best uh, health insurance for them. So there's one's relying on the market and one's relying on centralized government control. And it's a huge difference. And your fifth point, uh, which uh, should warm the cockles of uh, Reason TV libertarians' hearts, is a clearly limited role for government. Is there a bright line about how big is too big there's in never terms a bright of government line. There's never, there's never a bright line. But, you know, I teach my students, uh, you know, undergraduates, whatever, that there's cost-benefit analysis, there's sometimes a role for government, national defense, security, enforcing the rule of law. But there's also, you want to know when the private sector can do things, and better, and most always they can. But so often we're having the government going and doing things. I guess an example now would be this requirement that you buy health care or that firms are re required to provide it, uh, in which case you are increasing the scope of government tremendously. Again, this is really goes back to the founding of the country, where there was this great suspicion of too much power. It came, of course, from this monarchy that was... Uh, really so oppressive and America has always been resistant to that and hopefully will continue to be but we're now having too much I'd say we're beyond the line at this point pretty clearly. This all sounds great common sense founders excellent how in the world do we get from here to what you're describing what do we do how do we get from well, I have here to a, in, in the book I have plans in each of those cases I think sensible plans in this case spend, get spending down to this levels where they were in 2007 as a share of GDP but I think what I also do is to look at the history. You know, I call it, how did we get in and out of these messes, or who got us in and out of these messes? And you can see periods where individuals may gave in on their principles. Uh, Richard Nixon had free market principles, but gave in, and we had major wage and price controls. And you had Ronald Reagan, free market principles, and he made a huge difference. He had people around him who were dedicated to those principles, and he stuck to them. And so you can see periods. Fortunately, we have the history. We have, if you like, a, 
a, a way to look at uh, what happened, and, and I see a great potential to getting back to where we were. Actually, I'd say it was a good period was the 80s and 90s, and it's just more recently where we got off track. And so we can get back there, and uh, we have to because America can be great again, economically speaking, if we do that. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate you talking with us about your new book. Thank you. I'm Catherine Mangi Ward for Reason TV.